Poverty in South Africa, some positive and negative stories drawn from the National Income Dynamics Study. Income poverty is falling gradually. The proportion of the population below the poverty line was 11% lower in 2012 than it was in 2008. But many people are falling in and out of income poverty. 6% of people who were not poor in 2008 were poor by 2010-2011 and were still poor by 2012. 5% of people went into and back out of income poverty between 2008 and 2012. In fact, there's a lot of movement in and out of income poverty. 25% of people were not poor in 2012, but had been poor at some time since 2008. And 16% of people were poor in 2012, but had not been poor at some time since 2008. Some long-term good news is that 8% of people who were poor in 2008 were not poor when we met them in 2010-2011 and were still not poor in 2012. There are some important lessons to be learned by looking more deeply into these successes. However, for a lot of people, the overall picture is one of uncertainty, with frequent shifts into and out of poverty. In fact, it's probably even worse as we only see people once every two years, there has probably been a lot more falling in and out of poverty between these visits. Think of the mental and emotional strain on households. Having financial access to health care and nutrition for your family last year, but not this. And the lost economic opportunities from continually having to think in the short term. You can't join a stock file because if you miss some payments, you may lose everything. And so your little spare income gets lost in the day-to-day -day outgoing. You cannot or are unwilling to access credit. Debt that is affordable at the moment becomes a frightening prospect when you live in uncertainty. These people will need different help to the 30% of people who are, unfortunately, continually in poverty. Income is also not the only way people can experience poverty. The multidimensional approach to poverty looks at basic things people need in their lives, such as education, including schooling years and enrollment, health, including child mortality and nutrition and living standards, including fuel, sanitation, water, electricity, and assets. People are categorized to fall into one of three groups. The multidimensional poverty sufficient are those who have adequate amounts of all of these basic needs. The multidimensional poverty deficient are those who do not have adequate amounts of up to 20% of these basic needs. And the multidimensional poverty poor are those who lack adequate amounts of more than 20% of these basic needs. In 2008, 26% of people were multidimensional poverty poor. By 2012, this number had fallen to 21%. The percentage of those who were multidimensional poverty sufficient rose from 66% in 2008 to 73% in 2012. So this is good news. But again, just like with income poverty, there are many people dropping in and out of multidimensional poverty. 10% of those who were multidimensional poverty sufficient in 2008 were multidimensional poverty poor by 2012. 55% of those who were multidimensional poverty poor in 2008 were not in 2012. And of those who were multidimensional poverty deficient, 
about half had improved and a third had got worse by 2012. So whichever way we look at poverty, the overall trend is good. But many still live in poverty and many others walk a precarious tightrope, falling into and climbing out of poverty. This video was drawn from the National Income Dynamics Study. We continually follow 28,000 South Africans throughout their lives and collect a huge amount of data every two years. It's designed to help you create better policy, informed by better research. It's available and it's free. Find us at www.nids.uct.ac.za the National Income Dynamics Study, telling the stories of the people of South Africa.